Welcome to this 20 minute video entitled Lies, Damn Lies and COVID-19 Conspiracy Theories and UK Freedom Day 19th of July 2021. Apologies for misusing the quote from the great American author Mark Twain. And what I want to look at is how we can use lies with statistics to talk about COVID-19. And in the end I'll touch of course on Freedom Day. So you're at a dinner party, you've got a few flaky friends, you know, the type, they're into crystals, they're into homeopathy, they're distrustful of science. What's up? Said COVID-19 vaccines are a new world order conspiracy. I've read on Facebook that vaccines have been used to depopulate the planet. They inject you with microchips and then they control you. And you can say, what total nonsense. Now I'm going to look at examples how anti-vaxxers and COVID-19 deniers actually lie with statistics. And I use lie in inverted commas because what I mean here is to use sort of the correct statistic but then draw an incorrect conclusion. And in particular I'm going to look at Piers Corbyn, a leading UK conspiracy theorist. And he's been right down the rabbit hole and he's found a sinister new world order planning our destruction. Usually these conspiracy theorists, they lie not lie in inverted commas. Well, let's take a few examples for Piers Corbyn. Uh, he's a climate change denier. No evidence. Uh, he believes Trump really won the election. No evidence. He believes that Bill Gates created the virus. No evidence. He believes we're being injected with microchips. No evidence. He believes that 5G destroys DNA and propagates uh, COVID. No evidence. And believes that the pandemic is a plot for world depopulation. Now, sometimes 1% may actually be true. And a little learning is a dangerous thing. For example, just recently it's shown that the world's tiny implantable chip fits on the tip of a needle and it can monitor medical conditions. This is a very basic chip, a proof of concept, something that won't appear for many, many years. And it doesn't mean that Bill Gates is impregnating us. Just because something can happen doesn't mean it is happening. But as Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's minister for propaganda said, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. And the conspiracy theorists have certainly learnt from that. So how do we lie with statistics? I don't mean that the maths or the statistic itself is actually false. So we wouldn't use that. That's just wrong to start with. Now what I mean is take a true statistic and use it to promote a false conclusion. So let's take an example. We've got two cafes here, Joe's and Meg's. They get a visit from the public health inspector. Find that one out of every 10,000 customers gets sick at Joe's cafe and four out of every 10,000 customers get sick at Meg's cafe. Now those are very good statistics. It means that both Joe and Meg's Cafe are great places to eat at. However, you could have a headline which says don't eat at Meg's. Meg's Cafe's sickness rate is 400% that of Joe's. Meg will have to close and she'll go bankrupt. Or you could have a headline which says two great cafes. Meg's Cafe's sickness rate is just 0.03% different from Joe's very small sickness rate. And people start going to Meg's again. My only concern is that the one on the left might actually be used as a headline because the brother of Joe's calf is the editor of the New World News. So here's another example of how we lie with statistics. Take the National Lottery. When it first started in the early 1990s, there was an advertising campaign saying it could be you. The idea that you could buy a ticket and you could win. So imagine 40 million people bought a ticket on the first night and first draw. You're trying to pick six numbers from 49. The probability of you getting it correct with one ticket and winning the jackpot is roughly 1 in 14 million. So you could have a headline. You will never win. You have only approximately a 1 in 14 million chance of winning the jackpot. You are seven times more likely to be struck by lightning. And the result of that advertising campaign would be that the lottery would fold in a few weeks because nobody would buy a ticket because they've been told they really can never win, which is actually true. Or you could have a headline which says, one or more winners almost certain. There is a greater than 94% chance of winning the jackpot. And what that means is because you have 40 million people buying tickets, then there's a greater than 94% chance that one or more will actually win the jackpot. And there's the maths below. So back to Piers Corbyn. He recently posted a video of himself protesting outside Public Health England, which is an executive agency of the UK's Department of Health and Social Care. He accused Public Health England of a cover-up of the facts that 60% of recent COVID-19 deaths were of people who were double vaccinated. And thousands on social media spread the video and talked of vaccines being used to deliberately kill people and depopulate the earth. 
Now, my first reaction was, ooh, that looks really bad, until my son, who's a hospital doctor, told me off for being stupid. Well, that's children for you, no respect for the parents. But in this case, he was correct. And it just shows how easy it is to quickly draw the wrong conclusion from a statistic. But was it a true statistic in the first place? Let's find out. So is that 60% statistic that was passed over WhatsApp actually true? Well, it goes back to what I said before, that 1% of truth. In fact, it is approximately true. Of the 117 UK COVID-19 deaths caused by the Delta variant since 1st of February 2021, at the time of writing, 44% were approximately double vaxxed. But here comes the conspiracy theory. This shows that vaccines are part of a new world order to kill people. And don't laugh because hundreds of thousands actually believe it and repost it. So how do we explain that approximate 60% claim? Well, think about the similar situation. Think of a vaccine like a seatbelt and think of not being vaccinated like not wearing a seatbelt. Now, just like vaccines, which have an efficacy of, say, 95%, wearing a seatbelt does not give 100% protection against death, but it does reduce the risk of death. So let's look at the road deaths uh, in the US in 2019. Now, we find out that 90% of people wear uh, seatbelts in the US out of 222 million drivers. So what we get are these statistics, 200 million people wearing seatbelts and 22 million not wearing seatbelts. And we can look at the deaths and we find that of the total 22,000 roughly deaths, we find that 53% were wearing seatbelts and 47% we're not wearing seatbelts. And you look at that and you think, wow, seatbelts aren't much good. You've got a greater percentage of deaths not wearing seatbelts than are wearing seatbelts. So why is that? Well, if you look at the risk, the risk is roughly 0.006% of getting killed if you're wearing a seatbelt. That goes up 10 times if you're not wearing a seatbelt. So in the top row, what you've got is 200 million, a large number, multiplied by a small number, 0 0.006, which gives you 11,000 deaths roughly. In the bottom row, you've got a much smaller number, 22 million, but you've got a much higher risk, 0 0.05, which gives you roughly the same number of deaths. And that's why they both look the same, because so many people, ironically, are actually wearing seatbelts. So the first headline would say, seatbelts don't work. More than half of US road death victims actually wore a seatbelt. It's pretty convincing, isn't it, at first glance? Or you could say seatbelts do work, not wearing a seatbelt increases the risk of death by almost times 10. Or you could consider, imagine you went to the situation where 100% of people wore seatbelts. That's like 100% of people being vaccinated. Now we know that even with wearing seatbelts, you can still have the risk of dying. Just like being vaccinated, you still have the risk of getting ill or dying. So what you have now is that you have 100% of deaths come from people wearing seatbelts. And you could now have a new headline. And it says, seatbelts don't work. An amazing 100% of US road death victims wore a seatbelt. Or you could tell the truth, really, which is seatbelts do work. Road deaths reduced to a minimum with 100% seatbelt usage. Now, only a fool would believe that seatbelts do not work. And again, we come back to Goebbels. Whether it's lies about vaccines, the existence of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, or claims about a fraudulent US presidential election, just keep repeating it over and over and over and over and over again. So let's go back to Piers Corbyn again, and that headline about double vax deaths, those 60% of people who died from COVID-19 were double vaxxed. And Let's have a look at how we get that figure. So if we assume a double job efficacy of 95%, and by the way, vaccine effectiveness is in the real world and it will be different from 95%, but as it just, it's just a simple back of the envelope analysis to illustrate the principle. So let's assume that all 21 million people over 55 have been double vaxxed and all 47 million under 55 have not been double vaxxed. Then you have a very low probability, if you're double vaxxed, of catching the virus, obviously because you've been vaccinated. Um, also because you're older and you're probably taking more care, or isolating, etc. But you've got a very high probability of death uh, when the vaccine fails because you've got comorbidities, etc. And that's well known. 
Now, for those under 55, you've got a higher probability of catching the virus because maybe you're taking a little bit more risks because you know, well, it doesn't really worry me. I'm not going to get terribly ill. And if you do catch the virus, uh, and don't forget, you're not vaccinated, so probably, you know, more higher probability of catching it. Uh, it's extremely low probability of death. Now, if you look at the daily deaths, and it's roughly about 20, the way you find out how many people die in the first row here is to take 21 million people, roughly multiplied by the probability of catching, the, a very high probability of death, and you get roughly 9. If you do the same for those under 55, you get 11. Look, guess what? You've got roughly the same number or same percentage of people who are dying uh, have been double vaxxed compared to those who have not been double vaxxed. What we really should say is not that there's a conspiracy that vaccines don't work and we're trying to depopulate the earth, but we've gone down to 20 deaths from a peak of 1400 because of the vaccination process. And that's expected that nearly half of them are double vaccinated. Now, the real headline should actually be the success of the vaccination program and the success despite rising case numbers. So if we look at the case numbers now, going up very steeply and look at the case numbers one year ago going up similarly very steeply but if we look at the people being admitted to hospital while they went up very steeply one year ago they're going up very very slowly now so we seem to have weakened the link not broken the link weakened the link between rising case numbers and those being admitted to hospital and what was Mr Corbyn's response it was fake news shut down the BBC Yes, he had demonstrations outside the BBC. And again, we go back to Joseph Goebbels. Just keep repeating it over and over. Fake news, shut down the BBC. Fake news, shut down the BBC. Now, while Mr Corbyn's conspiracy theories about the vaccination campaign are just actually conspiracy theories, as we all know, vaccines do not give 100% protection against either virus transmission, illnesses or death. And as I make this video, the UK has removed uh, many COVID restrictions and is hurtling towards a what's so-called Freedom Day on the 19th of July, when all legal COVID-19 restrictions will be removed, including compulsory mask wearing and social distancing. And case numbers are again increasing exponentially and being willfully allowed to do so. And let's not forget what an exponential increase is. The equation is for um, a current doubling of case numbers roughly every six days. And super spreading events like the Euro 2020 competition cramped after maskless transport and celebrating in many crowding pubs will not help. And that will get much worse after the so-called Freedom Day. Even the UK Health Secretary Sajid Javid admits that we are now, quote, entering uncharted territories and, quote, daily case numbers could soar to 100,000 per day. So the gamble is that the vaccination campaign and currently about 50% of the population are double jab will vastly reduce both hospitalisation numbers and deaths. And to be fair to the government, this is a balance between science and politics, but it will never be risk free to open up completely. But the UK stands alone in the world with this strategy. And the criticism is that it is possibly more to do with the vocal right wing anti lockdown MPs in the governing Conservative Party than to do with science. And while some scientists support this strategy, others are very critical. See in particular this, particular, this letter to The Lancet, which appeared recently. And note that even Israel, with a higher double jab statistic than the UK, is now looking at a possible second lockdown. In essence, uh, the UK government's strategy is to stress test the vaccine. But remember that the link between cases and deaths is not broken, it is just weakened. And the gamble is that exponential case numbers will not lead to exponential deaths. And it's a difficult decision to make. And even projections of 100,000 um, new cases per day with approximately 2,000 hospitalizations per day may be considered manageable by the NHS. And that was according to Professor Sir David Spiegelhalter, who's a statistician at the University of Cambridge. And he was speaking on BBC Radio 4 PM news programme on the 12th of July 2021. But the problem is that this Prime Minister Boris Johnson has form over the approximate 16 months of this pandemic. And we have to ask ourselves, is he competent to correctly make these important decisions without giving in to a bunch of uh, backbenchers who have often been vocal on lockdown? And judge for yourself by reading this excellently researched 426 page book 
by two award-winning Sunday Times journalists. And it's one of the most excoriating critiques of Prime Minister Johnson's response to the pandemic. From it should be said, journalists who work on a right-wing government conservative supporting paper. So what are the arguments against the removal of all COVID-19 restrictions on the so-called Freedom Day on the 19th of July 2019? Well, here are a few from Professor Christine Pagel of University College London, and you can read these at your leisure. Now, finally, don't forget Bayes' Law. What I've tried to do is I've tried to keep the mathematics to an absolute minimum here. But lurking in the background, as always, with anything to do with COVID-19, waiting to confuse and confound those with sloppy thinking or conspiratorial ideas, is Bayes' Law. And this is Bayes' Law here by the Reverend Thomas Bayes, who lived from 1701 to 1761. So I try to keep the maths to a minimum here, so just let me try and explain this. So if we have A is the event that you die from COVID-19 and B is the event that you are double vaccinated, what does this mean? It says the probability that you will die from COVID-19, given that you are double vaccinated, equals the probability that you are double vaccinated, given that you die from COVID-19, times the probability that you will die from COVID-19, divided by the probability that you are double vaccinated. And this is the one that Piers Corbyn quoted. I think it's 60%, but it's actually 0.44. It is the number of people who are double vaccinated, or the probability of being double vaccinated, given that you die from COVID-19. So he quoted this to show you how useless and dangerous vaccines actually are. But of course, if he knew Bayes' theorem, then you simply put in this value, the probability that you're double vaccinated, and roughly we've got 50% of the population. And here we have the probability that you're going to die from COVID. Just anybody is going to die from COVID, which is still quite small. And then what we get is the important uh, value on the left-hand side, which is, which is the probability that you die from COVID given that you are double vaccinated. And clearly that will be very small. So thanks to Thomas Bayes, we can forget Mr. Corbyn's conspiracy theories. So to summarise, well, let's go back to that original protest outside Public Health England, where Mr. Corbyn said 60% of COVID deaths are of people who are double vaxxed, and it's all being covered up by Public Health England. Well, it's roughly correct that 60% of COVID deaths are of people who've been double vaxxed. But it does not show that vaccines do not work and are part of a new world order conspiracy to kill people and depopulate the earth. In fact, what it shows is that vaccines do work. Deaths have reduced from a UK peak of nearly 1,400 per day to below 20. And as we move towards 100% vaccination, expect to see the headline that 100% of the few daily COVID deaths are actually double vaccinated, which is exactly what we would expect. So in conclusion, always politely challenge your flaky friends with real maths and science explanations when they say, well, I just read this on Facebook or WhatsApp, so it must be true. Otherwise, we might all end up down the damn rabbit hole. So what's down here? asked Alice, looking down. Oh, it's just those very nice conspiracy theorists, Pierce Corbin and David Icke. Would, would you like some cakes and lemonade, gentlemen? Thank you so much for listening. Please keep safe. And after Freedom Day, please keep wearing your mask. Please keep social distancing.